60 Minutes advises that some scenes in the following story could disturb some viewers. As parents, there's one thing that scares the hell out of us, losing one of our children. And we've every right to be nervous too, because statistics show that driving a car is the most dangerous thing a teenager will ever do. Young Australians are dying on our roads at twice the rate of every other age group. And of course, there's no way we'll ever eliminate accidents altogether, but there are proven solutions. Solutions we Australians have ignored for too long and with tragic results. And we should warn, there are some confronting images in this story, but then so too is the death of a child. On a country road just south of Sydney, Darren Martin tends the site where his teenage son Shane lost his life in a car crash. It's a place he visits often. Just to think how could it have happened, um, to stop, remember him and the others, uh, whether to try and find some peace or something, I don't know, but yeah. As a parent, do you ever stop crying? No, not really. Um, it passes. I have... I have times where I can um, have a laugh with the best of people. But deep down, it's... It's a wall. It's a facade you put up. So that people don't think you've lost the plot. <laughs> At a cemetery just down the road, Bronwyn Harvey and her son Jason struggle with their own pain. This is where they buried Jason's twin brother, Andrew. And that was nearly two years ago. How have you coped? I like this every day. It's a part of life now. I thought they'd dry up, but they don't. Both parents lost teenage sons in the same awful accident. It was an early evening in October 2002 when six young friends jumped into a car. Shane Martin was driving. Next to him, Jared Drew. Was there any discussion about six being in the car, overloaded? Not really. Shane said at first, when they came out of the house, that one of us won't be able to go but if you all sit still, it should be fine. Don't muck around in the car, just act normal, just sit still. And they weren't going far. So crammed in the back were identical twins, Andrew and Jason Harvey, and two girls, Erin Langham and her best friend, Jessica Peters. So where were you all on your way to? The Picton Show. The local fair? Yeah, it's just down the road. So you're all just a normal bunch of kids off to the local fair going out to have some rides and, and, and some fun and at the fair. And fairy floss. And fairy floss. We like fairy floss. Jane was 17 years old and had only had his licence for three weeks. Coming into this bend, he was travelling too fast and lost control of his overloaded car. The last thing I remember before hitting the pole was just him hitting the brakes and turn and that was it. It was all over. And he died instantly? Yep. Yeah. And you were sitting in the front seat next to him? Yeah, I was sitting there in a lot of pain. I'd realised I was pretty busted up, but I looked over at Shane and noticed he was hunched in the corner and that sort of brought tears to my eyes. And then just continued screaming, just help us get us all out. A little while later, the phone rang. It was Liverpool Hospital to say that Jason had been involved in an accident and he'd been airlifted to Liverpool Hospital. I, know, I knew then, at that moment, I had lost Andrew. Andrew Harvey, Erin Langham and Shane Martin all died. Jessica Peters, Jason Harvey and Jared Drew were all critically injured. Driving a car for a young driver is the most dangerous thing that they'll ever do. Road traffic crashes are the leading cause of death for young people in Australia today.
Teenage road fatalities are a massive problem in Australia. Every year, 350 young drivers and passengers are killed and more than 5,500 seriously injured. Drivers have three times more crashes in their first month of driving than they will after three years of driving. The first six months are very dangerous for new drivers. And Dr Rebecca Ivers is one of Australia's leading road safety experts. Her research shows that all too often crowded cars and young, inexperienced drivers prove to be a fatal mix. Do you still think about the accident much? Yeah, days? every day. Every day? Every day it goes through my mind. It replays over and over what we could have done to have prevented it. Not your fault. It's, not it's your no fault. one's fault. It's been certainly not yours, Jared. You don't blame yourself, do you? No, I don't. But and I try not to blame shame for the other's death as well, but it is hard. Yeah. It was my son that, that was driving and it, it's, a, it's an extra burden that I have to carry that Shane was driving. Um, I, I can't get around that. But we as a nation can't get around the fact that Australian teenagers are dying on our roads at twice the rate of every other age group. And sure, breath testing, safer cars and driver training may have saved a lot of lives, but experts claim we could have saved a lot more with passenger restrictions and curfews. Australia doesn't have to look far to see these laws in action. Here in New Zealand, there's a tough set of rules for young drivers. There's a nighttime curfew from 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. That's a driving curfew. If a young person wants to drive at that time, they actually have to have a supervisor with them. The studies of Dr. Dorothy Beck are unequivocal. Curfews and passenger restrictions have saved hundreds of teenage lives. It has reduced the rate of fatalities amongst 15 to 24 year olds by 63% since it was introduced in 1986. 63% is a huge drop. Well, it's, it's a very significant drop, yes. And this is how the system works. While teenagers can get their licence at 15 and a half, they can't drive at night from 10pm to 5am for at least the first year. Afternoon, just doing a driver's licence check there. Do you have your licence on your hands? And then there's the ban on the driver's mates. And they the must be at least now? 20 years old. How long have you had the full license? Or have a full license themselves before they get into the car. Oh, and it's a system that many in Australia are pushing for. We can expect anywhere up to a 30% reduction in crash and fatality rates for young drivers if we had very good enforcement and we had high compliance rates. It's a lot. It is a lot. The fact that curfews and passenger restrictions are working wonders in New Zealand should come as absolutely no surprise to Australian road safety experts because those same restrictions were recommended here back in 1983. That's 21 years ago. And the really frightening statistic is that since then, the number of young Australians alone to die in car crashes is over 10,700. And that's enough people to fill both these stands here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Is there any idea how many young lives we might have saved? Well, we would have saved many young lives, but we would have saved many people from serious and permanent disability as well. In Australia at the moment, half a million people are living with ongoing disability as a result of a road traffic crash. Half a million? Half a million. And have you ever gone 220? In New Zealand, Canada and most states of America, curfews and passenger bans have had a radical impact on the death toll. But young drivers here in Australia are certainly not keen on any restrictions to their liberty. How would you cope with, with, with work if, if there were curfews? Um, I do pizza, I wouldn't want to do take my mum with me. A lot of people are at university, I mean they work at nights, how are they possibly going to provide an income for themselves if they're on their own? 
I mean, if they're independent, how are they going to work? There is talk that maybe authorities will allow you to sort of drive to uh, your education or to your work, but nowhere else. How many of you would take your pee plates off if restrictions were introduced? All of them. What we have to realise is the simple fact that if we were, if a war broke out today, we would be sending 18-year-old people to fight and to, and to die for this nation. Surely we're not going to tell these people that are 17 or 17 and a half and 18 that they can't drive at night time. But if the restrictions save lives, why not? Well, if it saves lives, but, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm yet to see the benefits of it, Mike. You Paul know. Gibson is chairman of the New South Wales Stay Safe Committee. He's proposing a big brother approach, controlling car speed using satellite technology. I think probably the most exciting thing I've ever known is in road safety is intelligent speed adaptation. Every street in a city or a country is logged and that the speed limit is recorded, sent to a computer, and the computer con uh, controls your speed. These are really expensive interventions. In the short term, they're not going to make any difference. We have to be practical here. Passenger restrictions and nighttime driving restrictions, we've got the evidence for those. We know that they'll make a difference. That night, Shane destroyed three families. More, more. And it is something you just cannot live with, but you have to. But while the it's academics left. and politicians debate the best way to Darren curb road trauma, no. Darren Martin and Bronwyn well, Harvey are out there, speaking about the pain so. they've endured since losing their kids nearly two oh. years ago. Having to I go and identify your young ones, it rips your heart out. This meeting is part of a road There's safety a program by do. local police. But as valuable as it is, Darren Martin believes New Zealand's laws must be tried here. I'd support anything that will save one family from going through this. What do you think of curfews and passenger restrictions for P-plate drivers? I definitely believe that we should enforce them. We should definitely pass it as a law. So you'd support both lots of restrictions? Oh, definitely. Definitely. That should be put in tonight. Since the accident, this is as close as Jared has come to driving a car. He's too scared to get his licence. And Jason Harvey isn't driving either. How severe is Jason's brain damage? Jason's speech is a lot slower. He's, um... Motor skills, he's left with a bit of a limp when he runs or tries to pick up speed. His memory. Um, and but, the loneliness. But you've got him. But I've got him. And that's the main thing. Mm. I wouldn't have cared how bad he was. It's mine. The cemetery, that's, that's my space to be with Andrew. We sit and chat. I never get to see him become the man that he'd started to become. And I know I would have been proud of him. He had a lot of good friends. He still does. I go to the cemetery all the time and I find little gifts and cards and stuff from the kids. It's not just Andrew the local kids come to visit either. Bronwyn Harvey can point to a dozen other headstones here that belong to teenagers killed on the roads. And it's small country cemeteries like this that brings our national tragedy right home. What would you say to a carload of kids who, uh, who might be about to go out for a joyride tonight? Slow down. Think about it. Because do you want to put your mum through this? Because I'll never be the same. Never. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the Nine Now app.